everybody. So like I had kind of promised, I want to do a uh, budget breakdown video for you guys that outlines everything that we've spent up until this point. I want to preface this with the fact that I was horrible about keeping track of where we were spending money, what we were spending money on. I didn't like categorize any of it. I did thankfully keep I think some of the receipts, I definitely don't think I have all of them, but um, so I was able to go back and kind of figure everything out. I meant to be way better about this from the get-go, but what do you know? So this video is going to go over um, costs to begin with, and then I do have a couple of money-saving tips now that we've been through at least half of it and kind of have had the chance to think about what we could have maybe done better. So let's get into it. I split my costs into three categories. I like tried to do a whole bunch of different little piles and then it just ended up, I think it's just better to do three categories. So I have plumbing. So plumbing includes everything, PEX pipes, uh, fresh water and gray water tanks, even fixtures. So I did like faucet fixtures, shower fixtures, all of those sorts of things are in the plumbing thing. All the materials to, you know, lay the shower, all of that stuff is in the plumbing category. I have a building materials category. In that category, it's all, it's a miscellaneous category. Um, so it's things like screws, any wood that was used for pretty much anything, any random stuff. So like going back many moons ago, I don't even remember making these videos, but the floor prep, so all the paint for the floor prep and the, you know, uh, silicone, the caulking, all of that stuff as in building materials, various other random things that I, you know, couldn't figure out where to put them. Um, and the last one is electrical, which is still kind of small because we haven't finished it off, but it, it includes, um, all the wiring and all the things that go with the wiring, the distribution box, it will include when we've purchased them, which we haven't yet, any light switches, well we have some, outlets, um, lighting, which we have none of yet, uh, so those sorts of things are all in electrical. So plumbing, plumbing came out to a total based on my receipt organizing and things that I've kept, my plumbing has thus far come to a total of $1,045.21, um, which is probably about what I expected. We've spent a good chunk of money on plumbing. We bought, you know, tools for it. We've rented tools for it. There was a lot that went into it. Mounting the gray water tank was a huge portion. Um, and I just like kind of briefly glanced at receipts. I didn't, I wasn't like, this item is this thing. I was like, this receipt is generally this. And I would just put it in the pile. I wasn't a lot like being super, super specific about this. So if you have more specific questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Like I said, my record keeping was not 100%. Next category is building materials. Building materials um, totaled, according to my receipts, $1,001.37. So that's all of the wood and all the screws and all the miscellaneous items. Electrical only totaled thus far to $144.85. So those three categories that I totaled together come to a grand total of $2,191.43. So I want to start by saying this is just the receipts that I kept. Um, my, like... You guys all know my parents have been super kind and helping out with knowledge and, you know, uh, physical labor and all sorts of things. One of the big things is my dad has a Lowe's credit card and that provides you 5% off your purchase at Lowe's every time you make a purchase. So I've been using his card a lot and paying him back for those purchases, but he keeps the receipts because he is really good at tracking receipts and that's a thing that he does because he's the finance guy and obviously receipts aren't my thing. Um, and some of the receipts that I have are for the Lowe's card, oops, um, but some of them I don't. So him and I had a discussion and we're guesstimating that I owe him still an additional 1000 that I've put on the Lowe's card to utilize the discount. 
So I think that m makes it, well, wait a minute. I did after, well, I collected all the receipts and then I was digging through my purse to clean it out to see if I had any receipts because that's the thing I do is shove them in my purse. And I did find the most recent Lowe's receipt, which would be on my dad's card, um, which is for all the tile and stuff that we just bought for tiling the shower. And that receipt was over $300. I don't know the exact amount. So let's say $2,191.43 from the known receipts plus the $1,000 that I roughly, I have no idea, that I still owe my dad. So we're talking $3,191.43. And then we'll tack on $300 for all the tile and shower tiling materials like grout and trowels and spacers and all of those things. So we're talking $3,491.43. That is for what we've done so far. That's a lot of money. I bought the bus for $5,500. So we are already in, let me do my, I'm just trying to do much math here. We are already in Uh, let's call it $9,000. We're already in $9,000. <laughs> That's close. If you want to do the math and tell me what it is below, <laughs> but I'm not doing it in my head. So we're already in around $9,000. That's a lot. Um, it's really hard to gauge how far through the build we are and like what the additional costs are going to be come, you know, the end of the whole thing. Uh, I do think that we're they're definitely getting closer, but I think that there's a at least still 4000 in cost. We haven't purchased any of the solar. I think the whole solar system is going to be at least $2,000. Um, if you have recommendations or tricks up your sleeve that can keep your solar cost under $2,000 for everything, inverter, charger, panels, wiring, uh, I, whatever else I need. I'm sure there's other things that I can't think of off the top of my head. All of the monitoring panels, everything. If you can get it under $2,000, send me your recommendations. Okay. Um, when I went into this, I didn't, I had like a rough budget in my head and I'm going to go over when I finish this, a couple of my like money saving tips, like I said. Um, but my rough budget was probably if I'm being honest with myself, I would have liked to have done it for 10. My, I ideally knew that like, I would like to keep it at $12,000. Um, but with my estimates right now, I'm going to be at 13. I would be stoked to only come in a thousand dollars over budget. And I know that if I do only come in a thousand dollars over budget, then my five money saving tips will keep you on budget. I can guarantee it. I can absolutely guarantee it. Um, so like I said, we're roughly looking at 9,000 in at this point. Um, now I'm gonna talk about my five money saving tips. So the first one, if you could guess, is come in with a solid budget. Write it in big letters on a whiteboard or make a poster or tattoo it on your forehead but make a budget that is like a hard and fast budget. Like I went in being like, oh, it'd be great if I could like make it under $10,000. And then I was like, but 12,000 would maybe be okay. Like that's not a hard and fast budget. Say I'm only spending $12,000, that's it. Like how do I maintain that? Like what can I do and then budget it? Like actually be like, if I do that, I can spend this much money on plumbing. I can spend this much money on appliances. I can spend this much money on materials. And then you'll have a much better idea moving forward what you're gonna do, how to do it, you'll have a plan. Moving into my next one, kinda comes with this, having an actual budget, is logging all your receipts immediately. So, like I said, I went through and like was like la-di-da. I kept all of them, but they're in a folder and I don't look at them. So you need to like have a spreadsheet Every time you come home from the hardware store, log your uh, receipt immediately. It's gonna be even better if you choose to have like specific categories and then you can itemize, like split out the items in the receipt and put them in their appropriate categories if you wanna get that detailed, that's totally chill. Um, but at least log the receipt immediately. 
and like keep your receipt and have it know that day so you don't lose it or anything like that. Tip number two. Um, so <laughs> this is a good one. Have a plan every time you go to the hardware store. I cannot tell you how many times I walked in the hardware store being like, what did we need again? And then being like, well, we might need one of these and we might need some more of these and maybe I'll buy this right now because why not? Like I bought an outlet like when we were still doing the insulation in the walls because I was like, look, it's in the sale bin. But I didn't need it and I don't know if it's in my budget and I don't know if it's the right wall outlet and all of these things. It's like, but this is how almost every one of our... <laughs> Uh, hardware store trips went. So before you go to the hardware store, go through the project site, walk through your bus, take stock of all of the items that you're gonna need for your next couple projects. Uh, go buy them in one trip. Make one trip, know what you need, have a plan, execute the plan. Otherwise you're gonna make 20 trips in a week and you're gonna buy unnecessary crap that you may or may not use, but did you need it right now? Definitely not. Could it be cheaper somewhere else? Totally. Um, tip number three is reuse materials. So I have not reused anything. Everything in my bus is brand spanking new. Every screw, every piece of wood, all the insulation. That's not true. I did use like a little bit when I was patching the insulation in the older videos, I used insulation that my dad had left over. But almost everything, I'm talking all the wood, all the everything, like everything, brand new. You don't need to do that. Like if there's still good wood left over, use good wood for your subfloors. Like if you can find good used plywood, use it for your subfloors. Save some money. You don't, and no one's going to see it. Use leftover materials. Go to Restore, find some old, you know, luxury vinyl plank flooring that nobody used, extra boxes that they bought and couldn't return. There's so many ways to, to reuse materials, and I did not do any of that, and that would save you so much money. My last tip, which I think is actually my fifth, my last tip is have a good design plan. So I'm talking like design elements, paint color, style that you want to achieve, all of those things, like go into it with that already almost set in stone. I did not do that. I didn't have any idea what paint, I still don't know what paint colors I'm gonna use. I already started with some leftover paint from my dad that was, I don't know, but so maybe that's gonna be the color. Mm. But like have an idea. And then like I did the wood paint, the pine wood paneling, like now it's starting to look like a freaking cabin in the woods which was not the design element that I was going for so I have to figure out how I'm going to make it not go that direction and that's probably going to take me more money because I didn't anticipate it in the first place also do all my fixtures match definitely not does my shower fixture match the tile that I picked for the shower is iffy like these are things that um if you have a plan going forward, you can find good value in all of your design elements. You can pick the cheaper tile because you already knew that you wanted it to fit within this specific style. You can pick less paint or different kinds of paint or whatever. Like if you have that all planned out ahead of time, then it's gonna help save you money in the long run. So those are my five major tips, um, money saving tips that I think would have kept me under budget. Like I said, I'm going to be very, very hopeful that we only end up a thousand dollars over budget. Um, like we said in our, um, I don't know, life update video, we have kind of changed our direction, our plans for the future. And that kind of changes the plans for the bus. Um, the couple elements that we're thinking of changing is we were originally going to have propane which included a propane furnace and a propane stove. And now I'm like, we don't need that for our purpose. So are we still gonna use the bus at the end of this? Are we just gonna sell it? What's better for resale value? What's better for our use if we're only using it for shorter trips instead of longer live-in trips? My opinion is if we're only using it for shorter trips, we don't need those luxuries. We can use a camp stove, we don't need a built-in heater because we can just take a space heater 
uh, for those short periods of time, those sorts of things that could save us cost in the short term, but would they hurt resale value in the future? Are people going to be looking for those features when they want to buy this as their RV or as their home even? Um, so that's kind of something that we are playing with. If you have any ideas or thoughts about that, please, you know what to do. Leave them below. Um, so that's kind of all of my costs and tips and all the things um, thus far. I will try to do another one of these whole cost roundups when we are completely finished with the bus. I, we are, we did decide that we're going to go back and start working on the bus, start getting some stuff done. Probably need to talk about a new hopeful deadline, a new hopeful budget, all of those things. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask away. You can ask us on here, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. I just did my first TikTok video tonight because why not, you know? What? So anyway, this I hope this video is educational and will help some of you in the future if this is the, you know, something you're planning on doing. Please learn from our mistakes, I guess. Um, but I do I do feel good and confident about where our where our bus project has go, come and gone and is going and I think it's all great. So we really appreciate you guys watching, keeping in touch, keeping updated, liking, subscribing, commenting. We like to interact with people. It's been such an amazing journey thus far for us for, and I hope for you guys. Um, and we hope to continue that journey in the future and hope to continue to have adventures in the bus, hopefully. Depends on how everything pans out in the future. But we'll talk to you guys soon with some updates on the bus. Bye. $2,000. <laughs>